Hello, and welcome back to another print and play tutorial video. Now, before we get started, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing all sorts of projects in the future, based around not only the Orange Pi series of computers, but around technology in general. Also, if you find this video useful, please toss me a thumbs up so I know that you guys want me to keep making tutorials like this. Finally, if there's something you want to see tackled in a future video, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to make it happen. Now, let's jump into it. Today, we're going to be installing Octoprint with webcam support on an Orange Pi using Docker. While I will be using an Orange Pi PC for this tutorial, it should work on any Orange Pi, as well as any other devices that are capable of running Armbian or Debian, although you may need to use a different package for your webcam based on the architecture of your device. This tutorial assumes that you're running a fresh install of your OS. Some steps may not be needed if you've been using your device for a while and you've kept it up to date. All the commands I issue in this tutorial will be included in a document down below so you'll be able to copy and paste instead of having to type everything out as you follow along. So the first thing we're going to do is issue the update and upgrade commands to our operating system just to make sure that we have the latest packages installed and that our OS is as stable as possible. So we'll start off by updating the repos on our computer. This is done using an apt-get update. Uh, also keep in mind, I'm doing all of this as root. If you're not running as root, you may have to use the sudo command to be able to execute some of these statements. So just be aware of that. So we'll go ahead and issue the update and let it do its thing. And with our update command run, now we can run upgrade. When we run upgrade, it is going to calculate how much more storage it needs for the new files in the operating system and prompt you to say, is that okay? So we'll just say yes, and we'll let it do its thing. With our device fully up to date, now we can install the prereqs we're going to need for Docker. So go ahead and paste in the command install all the additional software. And you may find that some or all of these are already installed, but it's better to be safe than sorry. And now that our machine is up to date and all of our prereqs are installed, let's go ahead and issue a reboot command to give us a fresh start. You can do this just by typing in reboot and pressing enter. After waiting for your device to come back up, you should be able to reconnect to it, and now it's in time to install Docker. Now luckily, the creators of Docker have made this easy. They've actually got a script at get.docker.com that we can use the curl command to download and run. So we'll go ahead and run that command, and it should do all the heavy lifting for you. And now Docker should be up and running on our device. To confirm this, we can do a docker space ps. And it should come up and list that there are no containers running on our device, but it has responded, meaning Docker's there. Now, if you encountered a problem while installing Docker using that script, I'd recommend rebooting your device and then rerunning the script. The script will notice that you have run it before and say, hey, Docker's already on this machine. Uh, did you use the script to install it? Uh, you basically just have to wait 20 seconds. It gives you the chance to cancel out. And after 20 seconds, it'll rerun the setup. And that usually solves the problem. Now, in order to make our job a little bit easier, the other piece of software we're going to install is Docker Compose. Docker Compose basically makes it easier to orchestrate the running of Docker containers. So we can just do an apt git install docker dash compose. And once again, it'll pop up and say, hey, this is going to use up this much storage on your system. Are you OK with this? We'll say yes and then let it install. Next, let's make a directory for Octoprint. So we'll do an mkdir octoprint. And then we can switch to that directory. And from in there, you're going to want to create a directory for the printer you're working with. So in this case, it's my RepRap printer we're going to be testing with. So we'll make a directory called RepRap. From there, let's switch to the RepRap directory and use the pwd command to get the exact path to that directory. We're going to copy this because we're going to need that later. In addition to that directory, we're also going to have to take note of how your printer is connected to your device. So we'll identify your printer by doing an ls in the slash dev directory. And because most printers are identified as a teletype device, we're going to do tty. And this is where it might vary. My device is a USB device. So if we do tty u and then an asterisk, it comes back and shows that my printer is connected as slash dev slash tty usb zero. Some other devices may also start off with ACM and there may be other ones that I'm not aware of. So your mileage may vary. Uh, in my case, I'm going to take note of this slash dev slash TTY USB zero, and then we'll move on to building our Docker image. So let's go ahead and drop down a directory back into our Octoprint directory. And then we're going to use the nano command to edit a file called docker-compose.yml. This is a new file that we're creating, and it's basically going to tell Docker Compose how to build our instance of Octoprint. 
Now we'll paste in the contents of the Docker Compose example that's provided in the documentation. And this is where you'll have to customize it for your individual device. So uh, version 2.2 stays the same as well as services. You can call your Octoprint instance whatever you want. Uh, restart unless stopped basically tells it that uh, if you don't force it to stop, then just keep restarting until it works properly. Uh, this is telling it which image to use, which we're using the Octoprint image. Now, you'll find stuff like this in the Docker Compose file where you have something on the left side, colon, something on the right side. So this is basically saying that port 4000 on our host device, in this case, the Orange Pi, corresponds to port 5000 on the inside of our Docker container. So whatever we try to access on port 4000 on our Orange Pi will correspond to port 5000. It's like port forwarding when you're using a router. Uh, likewise, we have our uh, device layout here. So there is the slash dev slash TTY USB zero, and then colon. And then this is how it's the slash dev slash TTY ACM zero is how it's going to be identified inside our Docker container. And that's how Octoprint will see the device. Finally, we have to provide a volume because it needs to be able to read and write to a directory. And this is where we kept the note before. So the slash home slash octoprint directory inside our Docker container will correspond to the slash root slash octoprint slash rep rep directory on our actual device. Well, if all that stuff's filled in properly, we can do a control X. It'll prompt us to save and we'll say yes. And then just save it as docker compose.yml. If everything's gone properly, we should be able to do a docker dash compose up and then dash D because otherwise we're gonna get a ton of logging coming out from it. And that should create the Docker image for Octoprint that we need. And you'll see it's now downloading the latest version of the Octoprint image, which will take a little bit of a little bit of time, and then it should start it automatically. Now, once it's finished doing what it's doing, it should try to start Octoprint in the background. And we can confirm this by typing Docker PS and get a list of the containers that are running. Now, as we can see, it's created a container called Octoprint underscore Octoprint underscore RepRap underscore one. And it's in a state of restarting, which means that it's encountering some sort of problem. Now this isn't unexpected, but I'll show you how to look at the logs so you can diagnose problems on your own. So we can type in docker logs and then give it the container ID and it'll spit out a log of what it's been trying to do. And in this case, it's complaining that it's got permission denied when trying to write to its home directory. Now, I haven't found out an easy way around this, but essentially, if we take a look at our rep wrap directory, it's owned by root. And in order to get things to execute in it properly, we have to actually give it basically full full run access we need to be able to execute stuff from within there read and write so we can do a chmod dash r and that's a capital r for recursive 777 rep rep then if we do a docker ps and then we do docker restart and pass it the container id hopefully it should be able to restart it cleanly because it now has the ability to read and write from that directory we'll do docker ps again and now we can see it's changed to a status of up for five seconds, and it is showing us that port 4000 is being forwarded to port 5000. Now it's time to jump into the browser and make sure that we can actually access our instance of uh, Octoprint. So now in our browser, we should be able to type in the IP address of our device, followed by the port that we've identified, in this case 4000, and hit enter, and after a couple of seconds, we should get the configuration wiz wizard for Octoprint. And there we have it. So if you're not planning to set up a webcam, then you can skip the next portion of this. Uh, I'm going to leave this tutorial open and we'll go back and add webcam support so that when we get to the webcam and time lapse section, we can fill that in. Again, if you're not going to do that, then just skip over the next couple of minutes and you can finish running through the tutorial. And of course, if you've run through this tutorial before on another device, then you should have no issues here. And jumping back to our terminal, now we need to identify our webcam. So we can do an ls slash dev slash vid with an asterisk and it'll list all the video devices connected. Now I haven't actually connected my webcam now and I would recommend having it disconnected the first time you do this. Uh, I believe that the Orange Pi PC has an integrated camera controller. So it's coming up with a slash dev slash video zero, which isn't our camera. If we then connect our actual camera up to the device and then reissue that command, we now see that a video one and a video two have popped up. Um, there seems to be some sort of weird issue with my camera. It's being identified twice. However, in my case, slash dev slash video one should be the one that we need to take note of. Now we're going to jump back into our Docker compose and we're going to add a section for our camera support. And much like before, we can go ahead and copy the example out of the configuration file included in the description of this video. 
and you're gonna need to make some customizations or not depending on how close yours uh, setup resembles mine in this case here we're gonna map uh, slash dev slash video one to slash dev slash video zero inside the docker container um, we're using the Pi 3 image, which is compatible with the Orange Pi. There are other images available that you may want to investigate, but for our purposes, this should be fine. And then depending on the support from your webcam, uh, I'm running a resolution of 1280 by 720 at 30 frames a second. And this finally tells it the name of the device we're connecting to inside the container. So we'll do a control X, we'll save again, docker dash composeyml And then we can do a docker dash compose up dash D and with any luck it should initialize our camera and get it up and running. If our camera then becomes available after installing the package it should be available on port 8080 the same way it, uh, Octoprint's available on port 4000 when accessing the IP address of our device. Now we'll jump back over to our browser and we'll give it uh, the IP address of our device colon 8080 and then we can do slash question mark action equals stream. That should give us a stream from our webcam and here we can see the Calicat on the bed of the printer that we're working on right now. You also have the ability to do slash or equal snapshot and we'll get a still image instead of a video stream. And now we're ready to jump back into Octoprint and finish configuring it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and step through the wizard here. Now you may know this stuff already and um, if that's the case, go ahead and skip through. But um, here, basically, we can uh, add access control. So that's a username and password so that not just anybody can go in and start controlling your printer. I always like to leave this enabled. So I'll give it a username and a password. And we'll click uh, keep access control enabled and then move on next. Uh, you can enable or disable anonymous usage tracking. Uh, online connectivity check just allows it to check to see if it's connected to the internet. I usually don't bother with it. Uh, plugin blacklist allows them to enable or disable, or rather, disable plugins on your device if there ends up being an issue with one of them. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, enable the blacklist plugin. Here you can name your device. I'm just going to call it wrap wrap, and you can set up the dimensions. The dimensions here are used to warn you if you try to print something that's actually bigger than your uh, your bed. So fill that in. Server commands. Well, since this is running in a Docker container, these commands don't really apply anymore. And here we can provide our stream information. So again, that is going to be on port uh, 8080 in our case. And the stream URL will be stream at the end. The snapshot one will be snapshot at the end and it should come up with an image. And finally, and fortunately, uh, FFmpeg is actually included in our Octoprint install, so you can find that in slash opt slash FFmpeg slash FFmpeg. We'll click test, it says path is valid, next, and you're now ready to use your printer. So that's it, that's the whole tutorial. You should now have an instance of Octoprint up and running uh, using a Docker container as well as your camera. Uh, so from this point forward you can actually just click connect to connect to your printer and if everything's working properly you should now have control of it as well as the ability to view your webcam using the control window here. Okay, well, I hope you guys found this helpful. There will be a future tutorial video on how to use this method to be able to control multiple printers and multiple webcams using the same device, so keep an eye on for that. Again, if you found this helpful, toss me a thumbs up and, you know, subscribe for future content. And as always, I appreciate you watching till the end, and until next time, stay creative.